Many Australians can identify the seven states and territories which make up our country, our wonderful country. But what is less known is the history behind these borders. Every border on the Australian map tells a story, both past and present. A Foxtel one hour special, The State We Are In, Australia's border story, hosted by Ray Martin, investigates how the borders were drawn up and the impact those decisions had on land, people and culture. I'm very happy to say that Ray Martin joins us here in the studio. Look, it doesn't sound entirely sexy, a documentary <laughs> about sexy. borders, but I'm imagining a, a great way to show off, at the very least, our beautiful country. It, it is both of those. I thought it would be um, lawyers and surveyors. Oh, yeah. Dull, dull, dull. It was, in fact, fantastic. It's a rollicking story of maybe the 1800s in Australia up to uh, Federation. But the state of origin, the battle between states to acquire land and to and the way they doctored the borders, and it wasn't simply a straight line it was, as it was meant to be. It starts getting higgly-piggly and, and part of one foot's in South Australia and when it should be in Victoria, and et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, w it was prompted by the, the COVID lockdown when, when borders became sort of no-man's lands and or no-go zones. And, uh, and we thought, how, where did this begin? And, uh, you know, how come you couldn't go into West Australia? Yeah. How come you could, et cetera, et cetera. So we went back to find it. And they're rollicking, funny, interesting, power play stories and lots of lots of power play oh good well i think with covid it, it reinforced to me how tribal we are uh, in our mm. state identity some more than others did you find that as well a absolutely and, and I, I was talking to someone about i grew up in country new south wales and i always sort of think of myself as an australian first and a new south yeah. Welshman second in wa and queensland they don't of course no. um, and, and victoria uh, maybe too. yeah we, in <laughs> fact we spoke to uh, uh, daniel uh, andrew's uh, wife who's a historian she was talking about lovely story about how the belief now is that gold was discovered about 18 months before it was it was uh, announced in mm. in Victoria, because they held off until Victoria got its self-governing rights from New South Wales, and they were sick of all the fun, all the taxes going to New South Wales and making wonderful buildings in New South Wales. So, the belief now amongst historians is that they actually held off from it was eventually discovered in Clunes, but they said it was 18 months earlier wow. with heavy just north of Clunes, and they and they wouldn't tell them because they were sick of sick of New South Wales getting the right away. And she says the um, you know, she says, A, she feels like a Victorian mm. before she feels like an Australian. And also says that that was the start of the you know, state rivalry that we have between Victoria and New South Wales. Yeah, we see that particularly in our sporting endeavours as well, state of origin, yep. uh, football being one of those. But also the border towns. I mean, when you talk about this uh, tribalism of, of states and that identity, what is it like on in some of these border towns? Is well, it a bit of a, a mixed identity? Absolutely. I mean, we, we talk to people because the Victorian border was meant to finish at the Murray River in South mm -hmm. Australia with South Australia and didn't. Part of what was meant to be South Australia is Victoria. So you talk to people, there, farmers there who are actually in what should have been South Australia but is part of Victoria and, and they feel like South Australians. So they say, you know, we don't have nothing to do with Melbourne. We go to Adelaide when we want to buy a fridge or something. Um, and then on the other side, we went to this little, there's a, a, a beautiful railway station uh, there on the board, which the Victorian and South Australian governments in the 1890s decided to build this massive station there and it was it was meant to be the bridge between the two states part was in south australia part was in victoria and they actually so that the the rail gauges would end there they'd come up people would get off prisoners dead bodies wow. there's a, a morgue underneath they do the whole thing the transfer prisoners five jail cells to take prisons from new south wales to sorry, victoria to south australia and then they everything was fine they they shared the cost of building this wonderful English Victorian station, and they thought, whoops, the surveyors got it wrong. It's actually on in Victoria and oh, so on no. South Australian borders down there. So the, it became a ghost town. This beautiful station became a ghost town. It was no longer the border. Yeah, and these sorts of map. things we didn't know. You do. Yeah, well, you do. so what did you learn? I know you're a great history buff, and again, going back to my original question, borders don't seem so sexy, but now you've uh, laid it out. It was such it, a fabulous. Um, documentary way to showcase the Australian landscape, but is there anything that particularly surprised you? Well, a couple of things. Um, of all the things I've done over the years, I've never had the response that I've had to this one now. It's been on once on Fox. Um, if people saying, "Wow, I didn't know that. 
wow, I didn't know this. There are ordinary journalists and other ordinary people who, you know, know a lot of things. I didn't know that. So it was that. But the other one is there was a time in the 1930s when we could have had Israel and Australia quite seriously. There was a, an area between in the, in, around Lake Argyle now, but around Kananara into Northern Territory. And because the Jews were being exterminated and put in pogroms in, in um, wow. Germany and in Russia, there was a move afoot to initially plant 7,000 Jews there to save them from dying in Europe up to a million Jews that were going to be in this one area of Lake Argyle. Wow. And it got as far as the West Australian Premier agreed, the West Australian newspaper agreed, the Catholic and Anglican churches agreed, the unions agreed, business agreed. Menzies put it on hold for a moment um, and then the war with Japan started and Chifley said no. He knocked on the head, but there was a... That would have been a million... You imagine a million Jews before Israel was there living in this... Like Mormons living in America, in a state of Australia, how they would have turned Australia's focus to, to Asia much before, you know, what we're doing now. Plus, of course, you know, had things growing there. But it was a... So we took a rabbi out there and, uh, who knew, knew the story. And, uh, and just... It isn't... Sim it's not fiction. It was a real uh, distinct possibility. No, I didn't know that. No, that is, a, that is incredible. Well, Ray Martin, you are a master storyteller. I am convinced. I'm going home. I'm going to put it on my record list. Have a look. And um, It's good fun, I tell you. Man. OK. It's good fun. Every kid at school should... In history, you should have a look at this. It's wonderful. Great. I love it. Oh, Ray Martin, you. great to talk to you this morning. And borders are sexy. There you go. There you go. Great story. Never knew, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped up. It's not all about COVID either. And you can watch The State... We're in Australia's border story on Foxtel and on demand on Sky News on August the 14th at 7pm.